Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs. The Orthodox Union. The Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Abel Dinonair has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times. New York Parrot Online Newspaper. Muslim Community Report www.thisisthebronx.info and www.h.com Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Tyler. And on this particular episode, we are talking to Jake Musa Drame, um, editor in chief and uh, 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 chief officer of um, uh, Parkchester Times, New York Parrot, and the Muslim Community Report, which is part of um, the Muslim Media Corporation who sponsors Abel Dinanair. And we would also like to say um, special thanks to our sponsors. Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, Muslim Media Corporation, uh, and also uh, with uh, partners as the um, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many, many, many others. Um, uh, welcome, Shakeb Musadrame, to Able Done On Air once again. Thank you, Larry, and thank you, Larry, for having me one more time. I am excited to be on again. Okay, and we would like to, um, today, we are talking about a very uh, um, important topic, violence and violence around the world and violence in the Bronx, and also we are going to also talk about violence and people with disabilities. Um, so why don't we start... Um, what's going on in the Bronx, and why is uh, the Bronx, um, you know, having problems with violence uh, around people with disabilities as well? Yes, Larry, thank you uh, for this particular show because it is extremely relevant these days uh, to talk about violence in general and violence against people with disabilities in, in particular. Um, you know, you were here in New York when uh, uh, former Mayor Bloomberg was our mayor. And yeah. Mayor Bloomberg was able, you know, to bring um, the crime and violence to their lowest level in, uh, since the counting began. Uh, because um, you know, he was able um, to be, uh, you know, tough on crime and had policies that were very strict with law and order, which is what we needed. But unfortunately, you have so many community activists who are anti-police, you know, anti-law and order, and, you know, completely misinterpreted Bloomberg's record and his mayoral uh, you know, efficiency and leadership and narrow every single aspect of, you know, his leadership into stop and press. And, um, you know, they were victorious because they were able to almost eliminate stop and press. But by doing 
You say, wait a second, you said unleash, you said unleash. Yeah, mm -hmm. on the beach. Now the criminals are roaming around in every part of New York City, including the wealthiest part of New York City. They are murdering people, they are harming people, they are attacking people. By attack, you know, attacks on innocent New Yorkers are all, you know, increasing, shootings it on... Yeah, a, a, example, example. Not so long ago, there was a shooting in Times Square, and um, and also one of the biggest things that they're having now is uh, homeless people are hitting innocent people, and uh, you know, and, and what about and what about that the um, violence against Asian the Asian descent, uh, you know, that's happening too. Uh, violence in Brooklyn against um, uh, against the Jewish population. Uh, when Jewish people go to synagogue, they're getting hit, they're getting robbed. So there's a lot going on. Um, um, and all the people are getting hit over the head, and other people are getting, you know, things sprayed in their face. Yeah. Uh, um, it, has the violence gotten worse since the pandemic, or um, or was the 1970s, 1980s worse? Which was it, or which is it? You know, some people, especially some elected officials, would like to blame the pandemic. I am not blaming the pandemic. Look, we, that's why I'm asking you. Go ahead. Yeah, we are experiencing this increase in violence solely because we have ineffective leadership. We have leadership that is controlled by individuals who are anti-police, by individuals who do not respect law and order, by individuals who are unfortunately, unfortunately empowering criminals to do their criminal work. Mm. And if you look at the anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism is not an isolated uh, situation. Anybody who is helpful to one group, uh, most likely also to be helpful to others. And what happened in the last several months where you find, you know, Asians who were also being attacked because they were Asians, um, yeah. you will find also anti-Semitism increase, you will find also racist attacks increase because those who are biased, they are biased to many different groups. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not biased for one particular group alone. So, all I'm saying is that effective leadership is what New York needs, and effective leadership is what uh, Mayor Bloomberg brought in. And unfortunately, because of you know how they uh, assassinate his policies and character, you know people don't even want to talk about the truth. The yeah. truth is, you know, common friends, while he may have targeted primarily the minorities. But also the number shows that these crimes, violent crimes, uh, are predominantly persist in these same communities. Now what? we can, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can always adjust to how we police our community. But if a program is reducing crime and violence, even saving a, a life, then that program need not be eliminated, but rather, you know, a, a, a net to control you know, with, 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 with individuals' rights, mm -hmm. you know, human rights. But now, now, I need to ask you... Right now, mm -hmm. we are not in a good situation in New York City. No. We came from the city to now going back to the 80s and 90s viral level. Now, yeah. I need, now, I need to ask you a serious question in terms of this. Um, they want to kind of de-escalate the... the, the the de Blasio administration wants to de-escalate police and, and put more citizens in charge. Yes, you have, um, in, in Brooklyn, there's a really well-known group that we know. Um, it's called Shevarim, that their citizens, you know, they, they, they carry badges, but they don't. And, and, then, and then your organization, Shake, uh, uh, you have a Citizen Police Patrol, but um, is it really, um, is it, uh, yes, 
citizens should know about what's going on in their neighborhood, but is it dangerous to put citizens in charge of of really violent crimes? How, how um, you know, what if those citizens groups get hurt? How, how do you deal with that? You know, every person and every group has a role to play in the cycle of public safety. You cannot eliminate police officers. You cannot eliminate the work of law enforcement. You need it and you need it every day, 24-7. I am one of the most vocal you know, promoters of grassroots crime prevention you know, groups. I have been advocating it for over two decades now, and I'm, I'm part of it from day one until now. However, there are roles, there are roles that different groups and different individuals must play when it comes to public safety. You know, Average uh, residents cannot uh, be, um, you know, empowered to do the work of, you know, yeah. gun carrying, professionally trained law enforcement. So we can all play our role. At the same time, we must also we must also bring parents also to the task because a lot of these gang problems we're facing and bias attacks, we are finding out that they're being carried by younger kids, like 11, 12, 13, 14 years gang members. How could that be? Where are the power? Where are the leadership? So we all have to play our role, but we need our law enforcement uh, you know, personnel to do the work that they are trained to do. We are not trained to be law enforcement. One of the, one of, one of the things uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, which is part of violence, um, you know, domestic violence is a, also a problem. I found um, there are six facts. I just want to bring this up. Six facts of, about people with disabilities and domestic violence, you know, violence in the home. People with disabilities have a higher lifetime prevalence of experiencing abuse than people without disabilities. People with disabilities experience violent crimes at least twice the rate of people without disabilities. Then, yeah. uh, number three, uh, people <clears throat> with disabilities are at times likely to be sexually assaulted by their peers without disabilities. Number four, in 2008, intimate <clears throat> partners perpetrated, uh, uh, sorry, uh, perpetrated 27% uh, of the violent crime against women with disabilities and 1.1% of crime against men with disabilities. Number, <clears throat> uh, number five, police are likely to, less likely to respond to reported violence against victims with disabilities than they are to be reported violence uh, against victims without disabilities. Police respond to 90% of reports by victims without disabilities and 77% of reports of victims with disabilities. Number six, a survey conducted by the Spectrum Institute Disability um, and Abuse Project found that 70% of respondents with disabilities experienced some form of abuse by an intimate partner, family member, caregiver, acquaintance, or stranger. Of those, of, of, of those, 87.2% ex, um, experienced em, uh, verbal and emotional abuse, 41.6% experienced sexual abuse, and 37.4% ex, experienced neglect, 31.5% um, experienced financial abuse, 37.3% experienced uh, abuse by law enforcement, and 10% were arrested um, in abuse cases reported by law enforcement, uh, you know, perpetrators. Anything you want to say against domestic violence, because that's part of it too. Uh, yeah, how, how, do you, how do people with disabilities protect themselves from violence? You know, violent individuals or individuals with violent tendencies are very, you know, very observing. They understand weakness. They can feel weakness. And if they 
are, um, you know, attacking individuals. These individuals are usually among the most vulnerable members of our society. Either they are alone, or they are disabled, or they are in the home without any type of protection. These are known, you know, attributes of violent individuals. Anytime they face real opposition, you know, they become, uh, they chicken out. Mm. They are not people that will attack forces that are greater than, you know, their evil, uh, you know, uh, attempts. That's why, unfortunately, whenever we experience a general violent experience in society, then it automatically can be assumed that, you know, women and uh, seniors and children and yes. people with disabilities are affected the most. This is a given. So, the goal here is to eliminate or reduce um, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the lowest level. Because courts... Because courts, are, the court is more stringent, you know, more stronger. Like, example, in years past, uh, I know that the law is that if you have um, sexual relations with someone and they are mentally incapable of taking care of themselves, or um, I don't like using the word mentally retarded because they don't use that anymore, but if they're mentally, in, uh, quote unquote, incapacitated, you can go to jail for a longer time versus a regular uh, person. You know what I mean? Um, the, the laws are, are, are more stronger in that way. I mean, violence against anyone is no good, but, you know, no, it, no. but it, 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 it becomes more of a problem if there's violence against people with disabilities, especially in nursing homes and hospitals. Yeah. You know? So, so question. What? So, so the main the main question becomes: Are the are the courts in this case controlled politically? Why are they allowing a person to be arrested seven times and let go? You know, let go, come back in, let go, come back in. I mean, something has to give here, no? Being 
But why is it? Why is it that people sometimes don't want to participate in civic affairs? Is it because they're scared? Well, I would like to, um, before we end, um, where can people contact uh, Park Chester Times and New York Parrot if they want to, um, you know, write for you guys or send you information? I made a mistake. So what is your title? I am the publisher. I'm the publisher. Okay. The telephone number here is 718-822-5555. 718-822-5555. And you can email us at editor at parkchestertimes.com. Editor at parkchestertimes.com. I'm a publisher, not Okay, so you're the publisher. I apologize. <laughs> okay. I don't want to and, be fired. And, and, but wait a second. You're the publisher, but um, also, uh, um, so in New York Parrot is www.newyorkparrot.com? Correct. Okay. And what, what about the Muslim Community Report? Same thing? Yeah. Same w thing. Okay, well, I would like to thank uh, Shake Musa Jarmi, publisher of um, the Muslim Media Corporation, and uh, which includes Park Chester Times, Muslim Community Report, and uh, the, the New York Parrot. And we would like to uh, say special thanks to him and um, our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Muslim Media Corporation, and uh, many others, including uh, the partnership with the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, as well as um, uh, Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and uh, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, and many, many, many others. Um, this puts an end to this edition of Able Dead on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm on. See you next time. Abled in on Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, 
Abel de Donner has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Abel de Donner is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England, Chapter.